Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. Right, long story short, um, I have a lot of lithium ion batteries here, you can see, um, and I would like to extract the lithium from them. Now we talked about this a couple of videos ago in regards to how we are going to actually do that, how we're going to get the lithium out, um, and we were discussing uh, different methods. Among the viewers, uh, at least at this point in time, it seems to be pretty much perfectly evenly split uh, between two methods. The first of these methods uh, involves extracting all of the electrode materials from the batteries um, that will be in the form of a mixed oxide of lithium, cobalt, manganese, uh, and nickel, I think. Um, very difficult to do chemistry directly with that type of oxide arrangement. Um, so the first thing to do with all of our electrode material is to dissolve it in hot nitric acid. Uh, that will convert everything into nitrates. Uh, we can dry out uh, all of that nitrate salt and then thermally decompose it all back into bare oxides. The oxide that we're left with, or the mixture of oxides that we're left with, uh, can then be put into some distilled water, and the only oxide in that mixture, which should be soluble, uh, is lithium oxide. So we will be able to separate, hopefully, uh, the lithium that way. That's the first idea, at least. The second method that people were a fan of starts out pretty similarly to the first method. Um, it involves, again, extracting the electrode materials and then dissolving everything up in acid, not specifically nitric acid, but it could be. Then it involves selectively precipitating out uh, our aluminium, our manganese, and then our cobalt and nickel, um, and eventually leaving us with lithium in solution, which we can precipitate out as a carbonate. Again, that's a very simplified overview of the processes uh, because I don't want to ramble on for too long, and we can explain as we go. What I've settled on, uh, ultimately, for the method that we're going to use for our lithium extraction uh, is kind of a mix between the two. First of all, uh, what we're going to be doing in this video and maybe the next video on the topic uh, is the first method uh, where we get all the oxides out, dissolve them up in nitric acid, uh, and then decompose the nitrates into oxides and separate our lithium that way. Um, hopefully, we'll get a relatively good yield with that, uh, but if not, uh, what we can do is with the oxide mixture that gets left over from that, uh, we can dissolve it up in acid and use the second uh, method in order to separate the lithium out in a different way. I'm thinking maybe the second method, uh, after having completed the first method, might improve our yield slightly. We might get a little bit more lithium in the end. And also, uh, the second method offers the benefit that we can electrochemically or electrolytically um, extract our cobalt and nickel from the batteries as well which I think people were keen to see. Anyway, we want to get straight into it. Um, but before we can start extracting all of our electrode materials, uh, we don't want the batteries to catch fire on us as we take them apart. Uh, so the best thing to do to prevent that uh, is to discharge them all completely. Most of the batteries here are relatively well discharged, uh, but I want to be extra sure. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to maybe rip off uh, the very ends of these batteries. You can see this is the, the control circuitry um, that protects the battery from overcharging and things like that. Um, I can just rip that off probably. And then if we have a look underneath, just very quickly, uh, you can see there are a couple of electrodes there which are the positive and negative terminals for our batteries. I think the same goes for pretty much all of them. Um, I think even this one you can actually see the control circuitry even better. Um, if we rip that off, we should have access to the battery terminals. And what I'm thinking I'll just do is solder some wires uh, to every battery and then lead the wires into some water with some electrolyte uh, mixed in and that will just slowly discharge the batteries overnight. Um, these biggest batteries I have also already discharged. Uh, they are completely flat, so I'm gonna ignore these uh, while we discharge the rest of them. I didn't mention this before, but all up, we have around 163 watt hours worth of lithium battery here. So that corresponds with a minimum of around 12 grams of lithium total. So hopefully we'll extract uh, a large portion of that if we're lucky, I suppose. Alrighty, now most of the batteries have finished um, discharging. I've still got a few more in here that are slowly discharging into our sodium hydroxide solution. Um, but for the majority of the batteries, I've gone through about half of them now. Um, I have taken them apart, 
you can see that they kind of fold apart into two electrodes, um, one being a aluminium electrode coated in our oxide mixture and one being our copper electrode uh, coated in just some graphite. Um, the copper along with the membranes and the plastic in our batteries um, they're pretty much useless so I've been putting them into a separate container over here. Um, we're going to just throw these out eventually uh, because they don't contain any lithium or at least it doesn't contain enough lithium uh, to make it worth extracting. Um, for our aluminium coated in our oxide mixture I've been putting it in this container um, along with any of the plastic that's still covered in anything that looked like the oxide mixture um, so there's actually quite a bit of it here um, I don't know we don't quite have enough nitric acid to go through all of this I don't think so I'll try to work something else out okay now we have most of our batteries taken apart and all of the aluminium and oxide mixtures uh, I've separated out in this container here. Um, there's still a few batteries left to do. Um, I have got these ones left. Uh, these are just still discharging at the moment. I've just shorted them with a piece of nickel um, in order to completely run them flat before I dismantle them because uh, that's always a good idea. But um, now's as good a time as any to start moving on to the next step and that is to dissolve all of our oxide mixture along with the aluminium in nitric acid. I have here some nitric acid uh, diluted quite considerably uh, just to start off with so we can see how fast this reaction is um, and I have here if I just get a small piece of our aluminium and mixed oxide um, if we just drop that in there we should see that dissolve quite quickly hopefully okay look 24 hours on and our worst fears have been realized um, I don't think the nitric acid dissolution method is actually going to uh, work for us. Um, it seemed to be working uh, overall. I mean, this solution that we have is um, intensely red, um, probably due to the cobalt that's now in solution after dissolving a couple of batteries worth of um, that oxide mixture. Uh, but we have gone through half of our nitric acid that we made in our last video, and we've only dissolved two batteries worth of electrode material. It took me a whole day to make that nitric acid and you know I'm not going to do that another five times in order to get enough acid to dissolve everything um, and I'd really like to save uh, you know the rest of our nitric acid for something that might actually need it. Um, so we're going to give up on the nitric acid um, dissolution of everything um, and we're going to move on to plan B. Oh yep, and by the way, since people were asking in the last video, um, this nitric acid we made uh, is approximately 75% concentration. So uh, that's about what we expect from the method we use to make it. But there you go, that's the concentration. The plan B I have devised is to just outright skip uh, the generation of nitrates and to directly thermally decompose all of our lithium containing um, electrode materials. So what I'll do is right now I'm boiling down uh, our nitrate solution. So we should have some nitrates in there. Um, we will collect all of the nitrate crystals that we get out of that and mix it in with all of the rest of our uh, oxide mixtures along with the aluminium that I've extracted from the batteries. And then eventually we'll go ahead and put all of it in the furnace. With the furnace, now uh, you can see I've already put in about half a battery's worth of the lithium containing electrode materials and I've been heating it slowly uh, up to a thousand degrees. I think we're at around 500 degrees right now and nothing has really happened. Um, you can't see any smoke coming out, which is a good sign. What I expect to happen is for any solvents that are present in our battery materials uh, to just evaporate off or burn away. Same for the plastics, uh, they'll all burn away as well. I've tried my best to remove all of the plastic from uh, the material that we're going to be putting in the furnace, uh, but there will inevitably be a small amount there. Um, all of our oxide mixture should decompose, I'm thinking, into its component oxides. Um, surely holding it at a thousand degrees for 15 minutes will, you know, split them up. That's my thought anyway. Um, and any aluminium, uh, which is on our electrode materials, which there is quite a bit of, and I think that's the reason we were using so much nitric acid before, is because there was so much aluminium, um, that should either melt uh, at the temperatures that we're using or convert to the oxide, um, neither of which uh, are in a form that will be soluble in water later. So that should be no worries. Eventually, uh, we will just get 
our oxide mixture and our slag from the cell uh, that we will be able to pour out or at least remove from the crucible and then once we put that in distilled water uh, the lithium oxide should be the only thing that dissolves. Anyway the next step is to just very slowly keep adding bits of electrode material to the furnace and hopefully it all just decomposes as we expect. Radio. that is the last of the lithium containing stuff in our furnace I'm just going to close that now make sure that it all gets nice and hot to decompose uh, leave that for maybe 10 minutes and then um, I really don't think we're going to be able to pour out uh, our oxides after we're done um, I think we're going to have to just let it cool down and then smash open the crucible once we've finished and there we go, that is all of the oxide uh, that we have decomposed in our furnace. Hopefully, as I said before, uh, that is everything uh, from the electrode materials um, split into its component oxides. Um, there's no real way to tell until we try to dissolve it up. Um, it's also probably mostly graphite in there. Uh, you notice the black colouring. Um, there will be graphite from the crucible, graphite from the electrodes, and uh, graphite from wherever else it might come from. I did almost get it out of the crucible um, without breaking the crucible, uh, but as you can see, sadly, we have had a casualty there. Um, very disappointing, but I do really want the lithium, so it's not too bad. Anyway, now the easiest bit of this extraction, if it has actually worked, um, all we're gonna do to selectively dissolve the lithium oxide in here, um, I'm just gonna add some distilled water so that we cover the whole mixture and after sitting and dissolving away for just a couple of minutes what we really want to see to confirm our suspicions that our lithium oxide is dissolving into solution what we expect is as the lithium oxide dissolves um, its dissolution into water generates lithium hydroxide which will give us an extremely basic solution so if any of that has dissolved at this point already uh, which we are expecting um, if we test the pH of our solution right now, um, we should see that it is very strongly alkaline. So I'm going to do that now. Moment of truth. Oh yeah. That is exactly what we wanted to see. That is very, very promising for having dissolved our lithium. Alright, I know I shouldn't get my hopes up too early, but I am very excited. I think this might just have actually worked. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just leave this to... Uh, do its thing for a couple of hours. Maybe I'll try to crush up some of these uh, big chunks of the oxide mixture and then we will try to filter off all of the remaining solids and get left with our solution of exclusively lithium, hopefully. And so after washing our oxide mixture five times with distilled water and then filtering our solution that we obtain from that, this is what we have. This is 800 millilitres of solution, which hopefully contains uh, all of our lithium. I mean, I did wash our oxides, as I said, five times. So you would think that any lithium that was recoverable would be in our solution here now. And as we spoke about before, um, there are a couple of good signs that it is lithium because um, our solution is very, very basic. Um, that's got a pH beyond the range of my pH paper there. So that's very good, very promising. And there is definitely quite a bit of stuff in solution because I think you can even see uh, around the edge of the beaker at the top, um, there's a whole bunch of spots where little drops of the solution have hit the side of the beaker and then evaporated off, leaving behind whatever is in solution. So I'm thinking and I'm really hoping that most of what's in solution is lithium. And the only step we need to do to get it out is to precipitate it as the carbonate. And to precipitate out our lithium product, um, I have here a solution of potassium carbonate that when we mix with our lithium solution, or what's hopefully our lithium solution, um, we will get a double displacement reaction where we have lithium carbonate 
precipitating out. So if we're lucky, as I add this, we will see a cloudy precipitate start forming. We had enough. Hmm. Maybe not. All right, disappointing results. Um, initially trying to uh, precipitate out our lithium with carbonate uh, was unsuccessful. Um, we weren't able to get any kind of lithium um, precipitate forming uh, just by adding potassium carbonate to our solution of what we thought was our lithium hydroxide. After that didn't work, um, what I tried to do was I tried neutralizing uh, our solution that we again thought was our lithium hydroxide with some hydrochloric acid first. I thought maybe that precipitating out the lithium with carbonate uh, would work better if the solution were neutral to start off with. Um, that resulted in some sort of precipitate, but not from the carbonate, that was just from directly adding the hydrochloric acid. So I don't know what that precipitate could possibly be. It's definitely not lithium. Anyway, as you can see, what I did with the remaining solution that we hadn't done anything to, so this was just the basic solution that was our, well, whatever leached out of our mixed oxides from the furnace, um, what I did was I neutralized that, filtered off whatever that precipitate was, um, and then now I'm just boiling it down, and hopefully, um, well, you can see it's relatively clear right now, and maybe there's something coming out. Um, hopefully, whatever crystallizes out, and I'm expecting something to, um, we'll be able to tell what it is. I don't think it's lithium. I don't think we actually managed to extract any lithium using this method, uh, but there is definitely something in solution and I really wanna know what it is. And there, now that we've concentrated whatever chloride salt we've made, um, hopefully it'll crystallize out and we might be able to do some further testing. And yes, the flame test was pretty conclusive. Um, we're pretty sure there is no lithium in whatever it is we've extracted from our oxide mixture. I'm still not sure what it is. Um, we know it can't really be any kind of transition metal solution because, well, all the transition metals we'd have uh, would color the solution to some degree. I mean, it is ever so slightly green, but I'm gonna put that down to maybe just having a small amount of trace nickel in solution. Um, if the actual salt that you can see we've crystallized out some of um, were actually a transition metal salt, I'd expect it to be much more colored. But regardless of whatever uh, we've extracted, um, it's definitely not lithium. So we can pretty much just discard this. And luckily for us, uh, the process that we've done has been enormously simple. The lithium could only be in one of two places. I mean, it could be in our solution over here, uh, but as our flame test has shown, that's not true. I think it's pretty clear that our lithium is still in here. Uh, the decomposition process just wasn't able to get the lithium into a soluble form. And look, it'd be easy to say that um, in this video, we didn't really achieve anything. I mean, we've spent all this time decomposing our electrode materials and using a process that didn't even work, but I'd say that we have succeeded somewhat in reducing the volume of the electrode materials. So now we've burnt off all the plastics and gotten rid of all of the solvents and everything should be in the form of oxides at this point. So as a result, having this material and knowing uh, that our lithium is almost definitely in here somewhere, it's going to help us out immensely uh, in our next planned video on this project where we will be dissolving up uh, all of this oxide mixture with maybe sulfuric acid or something, and then selectively precipitating out um, all of the rest of the metals along with um, electro deposition for some of the transition metals as well. But I'd really like to put that part of the project into a separate video uh, because this video is already a mess and I probably stopped making sense quite a while ago. Um, I would also like to take a break from this project for a little while because this has taken me two or three weeks uh, to get to this stage and I'm a bit sick of it, seeing as we didn't actually get any lithium. But hopefully we will be back soon, and hopefully in our next video we will actually extract uh, the lithium that's in here. So until then, I'll see you later.